Hello everyone, Mercurial Girl here, and today marks the start of a new series that I'm gonna call the Duality Series. I am obsessed with this concept on duality, and there is so many different ways to share this through the lens of astrology. Now, when I'm talking duality, I'm talking about darkness versus light, shadowy side versus that light and expressive side. I'm talking about yang versus yen energy, masculine versus feminine. The fact that we have two eyes, two ears, there's this darkness, this light, this as above, so below. There is so many dualities when I look around the world that it just is so hard to not see it as this pattern of teaching us how to embrace duality in our life. And I think astrology is playing on this concept in so many cool and ways that I'm just so excited about. So one of the things I wanted to paint in this part one is we're going to dive a little deeper into the moon sign. So if you want to pull up your birth chart and see what sign your moon is in, we are going to kind of break that down a little bit deeper. But to point to the shadow and light side in astrology, I really feel that a lot of the astrology that gets kind of publicly shared and is just kind of fun and goes over what each of the signs are like, I think a lot of it, that points to kind of the light, more outward expressive mode of the sign. And sun sign astrology, so when we're talking about what sign your sun is, that is really kind of that more outward light channeling of that sign. It's what you see outward. And a lot of what we see outward is because of the structure we have in society. There is ways all the zodiac signs shine in today's world versus how they would shine if the world looked different. I think a lot of the presentations of the signs match the environment that we are living in. I think when you look at the moon sign in astrology, it points a lot more to our connection to the internal world, the undercurrents that you don't always see, but you sense. The moon represents our moods, emotions, our instincts, and there is a lot more of a shadowy energy behind the moon. It's a lot more behind the surface. And I think because our society doesn't reflect as much of an openness to feelings, I think a lot of the way the signs manifest and present really is tied into how they think they should present based on the way the world is kind of carved and playing out right now. Hopefully that makes some sense, but I am always pondering and thinking about what the zodiac signs would look like in an alternate reality because I think some of the presentation is a coping and survival skill from uh, just trying to match the energy of the world and not necessarily what they're feeling. So when we look at moon signs, I think we can start to study the undercurrents a little more. We can see what a sign is actually really wanting. And maybe the reason they present more intense is because the world isn't naturally giving them what they're craving. So we're going to go through all the different uh, signs as a whole, but I already have kind of shared a bit about the different elements. So I want to go over just a kind of shadowy talk out of the elements and then I'll break down each of the individual signs. So fire we know is inherently passionate and driven and competitive and motivated but I really feel like they get written off sometimes as being intense and dramatic and feisty and blunt. And I think a lot of these like kind of more intense emotions you see from fire is coming from this really deep craving of not feeling like the world is focusing on their passions enough. They can feel when things are not not as beautiful as they could be. They are so driven by things that are moving forward and shiny and exciting, but they want that innovation and that growth. So when fire is being told to simmer down by the world, I think that manifests a, a lot as this angry and feisty energy, when in reality, it's this really like warm and 
ready for change, ready for things to just burst through with excitement and joy. They know how to go after what feels good. And I think if the world matched a little bit more of that, like feel good, playful, passionate energy, you wouldn't see the shadowy side of the fire signs as much in how it's manifesting now. Now to look at this in terms of air signs. So I think air signs get uh, kind of move through the world, intellectualizing everything. They love to learn. They love to take in information. And I think for the air signs, the, the shadowy side is they just really are craving communication and understanding. If people learned to actually sit down enough to talk out their inner truths, air signs wouldn't be sent on such a journey to gather up so much information because a lot of that information craving is coming because they want to understand people. They want to know why things are happening. There is this higher perspective, but it really takes voicing out and communication to get them to feel that sense of belonging and connection and safety. So the more we can learn as a society to share our innermost truths, voice things out and know that we can say things wrong and correct it, that it's not about saying it perfect. It's just about exchange of thoughts, exchange of ideas, hearing each person's take and opinion, and then talking that out. And because there's a defensive nature about our words, I think air signs have come off, um, looking really flighty and moving on from things really quickly and always learning new things and not slowing down enough. And I think some of that presentation comes from the lack of a world that actually takes the time to talk and communicate as deeply as air craves it. Now to talk about earth signs, I think earth present, earth, I feel like I think about them all the time because I have some strong Virgo placements. I think of this. I think Earth gets this reputation for being so goal-oriented and kind of high, like strong and feeling like um, very practical mindset that they just want things that bring them money and peace and security. But I really feel like if Earth was in an alternate reality that wasn't looking the way it was, Earth would be so much more deeply connected and ingrained into being in the present moment, being in deep connection and relationship with people, being that grounded presence. I feel like Earth is being so triggered by what the Earth looks like right now that they forget their nature of being able to ground and make people feel calm and make people like bringing groups together in a way where it's going to work. I think they're trying to figure out how to navigate the society, how it is, how it is so that they can feel safe and secure, which if we were all slowing down and actually in the present moment, earth wouldn't be trying to create a sense of safety as much through the material world. I think they just really want depth and belonging and a slower pace and don't want things to always be moving so quickly, but they also are so scared to not be able to keep up and they're they're working now heavier so that they can rest easier um, later. But if that rest was inherently available without them being more behind or less secure, I think you'd see a completely different presentation of our earth signs. Let's talk about water signs. So I feel like water presents so emotional and so like so in in tune to their feelings and so intense in their feelings that they also are scared to reveal them out so there's kind of this like secretive detached nature to water um where you don't even know what water really thinks and feels um but water is reading the undercurrents of every single thing happening if we were a society that actually 
slowed down and felt things together, water signs would be presenting so much different. I think that hard shell that they put up to protect themselves is so much more because the world hasn't given them an open door to feel their sensitivity, to know that their sensitivity is a strength and not a weakness. I feel like they would they would show us what it's like to merge and connect as one essence. Uh, water signs are such mergers and they get seen as being like needy and like uh, all consuming and like, why, why would you become so uh, attached and into that? But they merge into the feelings of something. And if we were all so detached from our feelings, water would be presenting so much more beautiful but because there's all these side effects of emotional repression water can feel the gap of where we're at and where we should be and i think that makes it really hard to connect to the world that they see and the world that they feel so the more we merge that gap and balance structure and that masculine energy with that feminine feeling slower receptiveness that deeper connection the difference uh, that would be the difference that you would see in water signs uh, especially they are our lighthouses to showing what is and isn't working and i wish we listened to the watery feeling side of things a lot more and i think that's where we're getting in society but it's just taking some time to get there <laughs> So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense with kind of playing on that duality. Now what we're going to do is I want to share what I feel like the inner truths and the inner needs of the moon signs are. So how to comfort and connect with each of the different moon signs and what they wish you knew um, for what they are really actually wanting you to give them, okay? <laughs> so we're gonna start with Aries, the first of the zodiac. So Aries moons to comfort them and make them feel connected to their most inner self live in their passions with them. When they are sharing something they are passionate about, it can come off very intense, but it's because they want you to experience it with them. Slow down, hear their passions with them, try to match their energy, get them to share their passions even more, ask questions about their passions. Slow down enough that their passions matter so that it doesn't come off so um, me, me, me energy and more like, wow, that is so freaking beautiful. Thank you for sharing that with me and letting me experience it with you. Now, the next one is Taurus moons. Now, Taurus moons are really slow to process and feel stuff. So the best thing you could do to nurture your Taurus moon is to lay down with them, Cuddle up in a blanket, light some candles, turn the lighting down, maybe get some snacks and just feel something with them without having to come up with what it means, what it makes sense for, experience the senses with them and let them get comfortable. Let them feel like they're comfortable is not a weakness. Sit with it with them, like embody that energy of relaxation and feeling fully in the present moment. There's nothing more that would make a Taurus moon happier than just cuddles, snacks, a really well lit room. Um, and when I say well lit, like vibey lighting, okay? <laughs> just to where you can get cozy together. It's the greatest energy to like sit with them in. The next sign is our Gemini moons. Now, Gemini moons are being tortured by how much they are thinking. Gemini is so fast moving and thinks so much. And when that's already channeled with the erraticness of the moon in the sky, Gemini's need space to just talk out loud all of their crazy thoughts and you need to make the space to tell them I will not judge you just share with me just start spitballing some of those wild thoughts out to me I am here I am listening ask questions let a Gemini moon to start the momentum to spill out their thoughts because for Gemini's a lot of times you connect the dots by talking and it's so hard when there's not a safe space with the people you love to be heard and to 
really hear yourself think out loud. There's one benefit of Gemini moons going to therapy and having a therapist kind of help them think things out. But when their loved ones can do that for them and just hear all of the thoughts that they have on something, it means the freaking world to them. So give them that space to talk. Don't, uh, don't shut it down. Carve out time each week or maybe even daily just to hear your Gemini moon and what their craziest, most wild thoughts are and love them for that. The next one is going to be Cancer. So Cancer moons are known for being so emotional and really having these output and explosions because of how deeply they feel stuff. But a lot of times for Cancer, these feelings are how they experience and move through life. And one of the best things you can do to make a cancer feel comfortable is to go over memories with them. Share the stories of like your friendship or your relationship. Go over like what was funny that they did, what was funny that their families did. Like they love living in memories because for mem them to go back in memories, they get to experience all the feelings again. And I think cancer gets so scared of their own sensitivity, they don't let out their feelings very often. So reviewing memories and things that have already happened, it makes it easy for them to go back and experience those and actually get the feelings out um, in the present moment that they don't quite know how to feel safe enough doing and instead do it tied to a memory and something that's been valuable and important and your relationship with them. They will love that. All right, so our next one is going to be our Leo moons. Now, I'm a Leo moon, so I will tell you what we need. <laughs> so Leo moons, I think, so desperately want you to understand for nurturing them that when they choose to let something out and express something and share what they are feeling, they re it really takes courage and authenticity. And I think just recognizing Leo's authenticity like means the freaking world to them because what is seen as dramatic is often them just really trying to be authentic about what they feel and experience. And because it can come out of nowhere, it's it really is matching their level of passion to something. And so when you experience that with them and you see them as really being brave for what they are sharing and not so dramatic, it means the world because it takes courage to do that. It doesn't always even feel easy for us, but we're willing to take, take that leap to be authentic, to help, um, help the world know that their authenticity matters. And I think Leo Moons get written off as wanting the attention of the entire room when more they're trying to say like, here is what I feel. Do any of you want to share your authenticity too? When Leo sees someone being authentic, they will help shine the spotlight on you just as bright as what it's seeming like they want on them. It's authenticity. The next sign is going to be our Virgo Moons. Now, I've thought about this one a lot because <laughs> I think about Virgo energy frequently with my Virgo rising and my Virgo Jupiter. Virgo moons are known for having this like nervous energy and they just like, you know, I think you can physically see Virgo in their just like disposition. Even me just like talking with my hands nervously, very Virgo rising of me. Now when this is channeled into the moon sign, Virgo moons do not want you to respond to their energy. And that might seem crazy and impossible, but that is deeply what they crave is for you to not be weird about them responding to something. They want you to ignore their nervous energy and keep doing you exactly as you would if they weren't in that space. If they see you cater to their energy, they're going to shut down because at that point you've put way too much pressure on them. They don't know what to do with pressure and they hate pressure. They categorize their entire life to not feel pressure. And so it doesn't feel good. So letting Virgo moons be themselves and you be that yourself and do not respond to their energy or try to match it. That is how you make a Virgo moon comfortable is let them just be their nervous, weird selves. Do not change. Do not ask. Do not point it out. Just 
Just, just do you. And slowly when they see you not responding to their energy, you get to hear a lot more of Virgo's inner truths and inner selves. But they will know right away when you're trying to push yourself to the side and do something for them. They can feel all the undercurrent. So you won't be able to play them out. So this is something you have to work on to connect with the Virgo moon. All right, so next let's talk about Libra moons. So Libra is all about balance and they're all about kind of like partnerships and looking at like kind of the good side to things. I think Libra will inherently not want to go into the dark side and want to give kind of the positive way out of something. So they like things to be beautiful and pretty and aesthetic and vibey and they really respond to like the finer things of life. But I think for Libra, they are channeling so much of like the societal standards because Libras kind of are always playing on the balance of things. They balance what society mirrors. If society shifted a lot, you'd see Libra behavior, I feel like also shift a good amount because Libra shows us what the scales of reality kind of are. Now, I think to comfort a Libra moon, they thrive on perspective. They want to know how things work and the opposite. And even though Libra can sound really self-assured in the opinion that they are giving, I think when you can offer Libra some very thorough counter perspectives, they really value and appreciate that. I think they want to make sure that they are avoiding conflict and avoiding the heavy stuff. So when you actually can share a really well thought out perspective with them, Libra loves that. It makes them feel like they are understanding a whole new take on how to see things. So give them a new pair of glasses, explain it thoroughly, and I think Libra will really love and feel comfortable with that in um, nurturing them and making them feel safe. All right, now next up is our moon in Scorpios. Scorpio moons, so many ways I feel like you can nurture your Scorpio moon and they are never going to admit any of this to be true because Scorpio hates being seen and noticed and um, they don't want their games to have an answer. So we got to keep this one on the DL for these Scorpio moons, okay? But the secret to Scorpio is to reveal your inner darkness and secrets to them. I feel like so many people wait and see what the vibe is. How much are they giving me before I say how much I'm going to give them? And you kind of feed on if it's comfortable or not. If you want to make a Scorpio moon feel better, you got to be the full secret revealer. You tell them so much about yourself, your deepest, darkest secrets, and you will get a little inch back from your Scorpio moon and they will feel so much freaking safer and you won't feel that feisty energy ready to protect because they know you just gave them so much and that means the world to them because they are so scared to reveal a little bit that when you reveal a lot, it makes them feel so safe. They don't have to do as deep of a dive and play this mind game to figure it out. Remember, Scorpio is a water sign and they're charged by a feminine nature. They crave that merging with someone. They're just scared to death of their intensity and how deeply they actually feel stuff. So be a secret teller, reveal your darkness, or if you are unfamiliar with your darkness, a Scorpio moon is going to be so hard for you to face. Next up, let's talk about our Sagittarius moons. Now, Sagittarius is this big, expansive energy. They get kind of known for like overly partying or overly escaping or being overly optimistic about everything and completely ignoring the dark and heavy. But I think inherently our Sagittarius is seeing the bigger picture. They don't want to get stuck in the minutia that brings brings them down and keeps things small. The greatest way to nurture a Sagittarius moon in a real way is not to numb and escape with them. It's to go on an adventure with them. Take them out of their reality and experience another reality with them. They love spontaneous road trips. They would love if you plan 
plan to go on a trip with them. They want to be experiencing life. And I think when you see a Sagittarius moon in that party mode that gets advertised, it's because they're so craving that bigger view of life, that bigger zoom out. And it just is like, no one will go on an adventure with them. So instead, like, let's just make things as fun as we can right here. They just want that. They want that take. They want that zoom out. Give them that and you will feel a Sagittarius moon just like light up and give you their truest self. Capricorn moons. Now I have a couple takes on the Capricorn moon and how to nurture them. I feel like once again, earth signs are so matching the reality of today's times that Capricorn moons get this reputation for being so goal oriented, so structured, never wanting to make a mistake. They put tons of pressure on themselves. And I think all of this is definitely true, but to make a Capricorn moon feel like they can relax, you just have to be competent about something so that they can actually relax. I feel like when you can follow what Capricorn moons are saying and do something a little bit more efficiently, they love to relax and chill. There is nothing more a Capricorn moon wants than to be able to chill for five seconds. But the lack of efficiency is felt so deeply that I feel like they just need to see that you are competent enough that you can take the torch for a while so that they can hang back and relax. If you are really, really knowledgeable on a subject and you can share that, Capricorn moons love to learn and to see how something works. And when you are really an expert on something, they love that. They love to take that information in. So share what you're competent about, share what you know, and give them a chance to relax because you've studied up on what they are needing for things to go smoothly so that they can actually chill. Listen to what a Capricorn moon is asking of you and stop seeing them as being like, no fun ever and figure out what they need to relax so that they can actually have fun. All right, next up is our Aquarius moon. So Aquarius is known for being a little bit detached and kind of like loner energy. They are really more introverted and like to just kind of see how everything works and see like kind of their own intellectual world and piecing the intellect with the emotional. They like to just play this like little detached game. So Aquarius moons, one of the biggest things you can do to let them be comfortable is just let them watch and listen. Don't bring so much awareness and attention to what they're thinking, what they're doing, what their take is. I think a lot of times Aquarius will share their opinion when they really want to or feel like they need to, but they love being watchers of things. They like to watch you share all your inner truths without having to create a take right away. They are always trying to piece together what their take is on something, but it feels good for them to be able to be listeners and watch and hear what your thoughts are. Um, so Give them space just to do what they do best and that's just to be on the sidelines watching you shine and figuring out what they want to think about it. The final one is going to be Pisces or Pisces moons. Pisces is always a feeling this whole other world than what you perceive and see right in front of you. I think for Pisces moons, having to say what they feel is literally the most impossible question because they are taking this combination of sensations, gut responses, feelings, and just merging all of it together. And it's so much more complex than sad, angry, happy, just cut and dry emotions. So I think one of the biggest things you can do for Pisces moons is first of all, to give them a space just to kind of like talk it out in any way. But if they can't quite put it into words, which is common with Pisces, and it can feel very frustrating, you can first of all say that they're safe to just talk it out. And it's okay if it doesn't make any sense. That's a really nice thing that could bring some comfort. But another side of it is to Share some of your thoughts and takes on things that are happening. I think for them, when they can hear the way someone is responding to something versus what they are feeling, it can give some context to stuff and help them connect more dots internally because 
it doesn't just roll in like black and white stuff for them. There is just this huge other world and hearing just what someone thought about something or felt about something through their lens can help them maybe start to understand some of what is going on on the inside that can feel so fucking deep. So give Pisces moon that space. So that is just my take on how to nurture some of the moons. I think learning about the moon signs is a beautiful way to see other aspects of how all of the signs present in a more shadowy and kind of lunar way. This is going to be part one on duality. I have a lot more dualities to share that I see in astrology. This was the sun sign presentation versus the moon sign presentation, but we will go into more dualities in part two. Thank you for liking, listening, and um, subscribing to my channel so you can get more Mercurial Girl. If you ever want your own personal birth chart reading to understand your soul blueprint, go to sensiblewellness.com where you can book a birth chart reading with me. Thank you for being here. I will see you next week.